My name is uh, Wali Adegoke, and I'm a HSD professional. So while we go through this course, we get to know a bit about me. Because of time, I would like to I would not like to give us more details. But while we go into the discussion, I would explain some things to us and which are my qualifications and those things and how I've been able to become a safety professional. So let's go straight. So the objective, I hope I'm clear enough because I I'm not too fast. We have like 30 minutes for this class. Someone should mute his, uh, someone should mute. I want everyone to please mute their uh, laptops so that it won't distract the class. We can all hear ourselves clearly. So at the end of this session, presentation, we'll be able to understand the basic concepts of a safety profession. We call it safety, HSC, some call it QHSC. While we continue to discuss, we'll understand why. Then we will let, after understanding what safety means as a profession, then we will now familiarize ourselves with the various opportunities that are in the health and safety profession. And I think that's the major part of the discussion. Then I will, we will now talk about how can we explore uh, the safety profession. Uh, Mr. Tariq, once, once we am, have used 30 minutes, can this signify so that I can always try to round up? So, all right, sir. So, when you're talking about health and safety, all right, sir. if you look at uh, the encyclopedia, the Wikipedia, it defines health and safety as a term that envelopes so many things. It talks about laws, rules, guidance, processes, and designs that help to prove. To protect employee, uh, employees, damage of equipment, the public and the environment. So when we are talking about HSC, we are talking about health, safety and environment. So the major framework is to prevent accidents. If you look at in recent times, there are a lot of, even in our homes, when we sit down in our homes, there are a lot of accidents that happen at home. Now let's look at the workplace that has a lot of complex activities going on. Different kind of people, different kind of equipment going on different kind of operations going on. Definitely there will be a lot of issues that can lead to injuries, accidents, explosions. You've had of various explosions in the past. For example, in the southwest here, yeah, you hear of uh, a gas explosion, you hear of a tanker explosion, all these things are as a result of lack of safety being put in place. So safety is just a tool, a system, procedures, processes that are being put in place to avoid health issues. Because there are also health issues related to uh, to the nation at large. So wherever we are, the issue of health, the issue of injuries, and it affects not only the employees but also the environment. For example, let's say there's a toxic release. Like for example, there was a time in uh, somewhere in the east where a company they use a kind of chemical to make their product. I won't mention the name of the company. Then there was, then there was due to failure in the process, due to failure in the quality and also in the process, there was a release of that toxic substance to the environment. And you know what? People started inhaling that substance, and a lot of people died, a lot of animals died. The grass, the vegetation, the vegetation went dead. Why? Because of a failure in the safety system. So we are not talking about health, safety, and environment. We're talking about putting a system in place that can be used to prevent accident in the workplace reduce the effect of the accident and what happens when an accident happens and at large how to protect the environment so some places they call it ohs if you see ohs it means i've, I've given the abbreviation and the full the meaning of the each abbreviation ohs means occupational health and safety that is based on the occupation that the person is doing ehs or hsc still means the same environment health and safety or health environment health and safety SHE is still the same thing, HSEQ. That Q stands for quality, and that is where safety becomes very interesting because virtually, when we, when we continue this discussion, you understand that it's not only applicable to a set of people. It's good to have a skill, like if you're studying a science, if you're in the sciences now, maybe you're studying, uh, let's say, biology or microbiology or science, science SLT, what you're studying now. You can, dive, you can divert to health, safety, and environment. You just apply the Q. How will you apply, apply the Q? Which is the quality aspect of it? We'll continue the section. Another aspect of HSC is the issue of security. So some people call it HSSEQ. That is health, safety, security, environment, and quality. So safety is a very wild discipline that 
gives room for everybody to come in and put his own word, his own input. And at the end of the day, it's a very wide profession that is really booming in the nation at large. So, why are we talking about health and safety? Number one, moral reasons. It's a moral reason to be safe. It's, it's simple mathematics to be safe. You don't, need to, you, you, you don't need to be told that you need to be safe. You are, you are driving from your home. You don't need to be told to check your brake, to check your steering. To check, though most of us don't even do that. But safety will tell you that these procedures are necessary in the workplace, in your home, to prevent accidents. So it is moral reason to know that, yes, safety is important. For the victims, those that got injured, or those that, uh, uh, got, uh, those that died, or those that depend on those that got injured. For example, in the workplace, someone fell from height. Maybe for someone fell from height now, was working on, at height in a very high place because of construction, and they, they didn't put safety processes in place. At the end of the day, the person falls and died. So it's not only about the death now. It's about those that are depending on that man or on that woman to survive. So it's moral reason to be safe. And that one is economic reasons. But at the end of the day, when someone dies or someone got injured, there is always a cost attached to it. You need to treat the person. You need to take the person to the hospital. Let's say, for example, we've been hearing stories of house getting burnt. Maybe just from a single candle. Someone, maybe someone was reading at night. I was using candle to read. And he failed to switch off the candle. Unfortunately, uh, everywhere got smoked up, fire engulfed the whole environment, and the whole, the whole house got burned because of a threatening era can do. So we are losing money. Just, I will give you some statistics in the next slide. Legal requirement. Now, is a legal requirement for you to be safe. It's a legal standard for companies to develop safety standard. We have the one that was signed last year. Uh, it's called, um, um, it's a policy health and safety policy that was developed last year. And we have the issue of fines and imprisonment. So someone, like some companies that fail to follow safety procedures and someone gets injured, there are fines that are attached to it. And some even go to prison, depending on the gravity of the accident. So if you look at these statistics, I will send this slide to you, inshallah. It describes some of the terrific happenings that have happened in the past few years. If you look at the right side, it, it, one of them said, 8,527 road traffic crashes. That is road accident that happened from January to November. That is last year alone, just in 2019 alone. We have 8,527 road accidents that happened. We have 4,163 people who were killed in crashes during the period. Now imagine that statistics. Average of 12 people die daily due to accident in Nigeria. Now look at the cost. Just look at your left side. It talks about the cost. One of them said, Lagos house, houses 25 million of Nigerians' population. Okay, no, let, let me go to one that gave a figure. Now, it said, the Lagos State Fire Service, just fire service, reported that over 9 billion naira has been lost to fire accidents. So we are losing money. We are losing people. We are losing people with, with intelligence. Look at the accident that happened to one guy, to one lady, I think that was last year, that uh, uh, she got crushed by a guy that was reversing Little things that we are, we are losing serious people that could change the nation due to little accidents that could have avoided. And that's how we have health and safety. I hope I'm communicating, please. Am I, am I communicating with us here? If, if I'm communicating, can you signify? Mr. Tariq, please, let me know if I'm communicating. Are you there? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, no okay. Me, sir. So now, let's now go to the issue of duties of health and safety Professional. If you are if you are health and safety professional, what are your duties? What are you supposed to do? These are the basics that we need to know before we now start talking about how do we explore this safety. Number one, developing and implementing health and safety procedures within the safety management system. This is basic. There are a lot of management systems. We have human resource management. We have uh, project management. We have business management. We have engineering management. We have a lot of management. Now, safety management system can be developed also. And there's a system. That they, they call them ISO standard. International Organization for Standardization. International Organization for Standardization. They call it IS. There are a lot of ISOs that you can use to develop and implement safety standards to prevent accidents. That is one of the duties of a safety person. Then after developing them, it's now your duty to what? To monitor, develop safety plans. How do you plan this job? How do you plan these activities? What are the procedures? Provide health and safety trainings like I'm doing to you now. I provide trainings virtually almost every time. 
carry out workplace inspection. That's what, what they call inspection. The same way you wake up in the morning to ide ideally inspect your car, inspect your houses, to check everything is in order. The same way you inspect the workplace to make sure that everything that you have been you have designed in the workplace to follow is being followed by those that are doing the job. Implementing them and other programs too. There are other health and safety programs too that you implement. I'm just giving us very fair. By the time you go deep into the profession, you understand better. Then you report on, on um, non-conformance, non-compliance, performance. Sometimes there's no way that there won't be issues on site. There will be unsafe behaviors. There will be rational behaviors. There will be unsafe conditions, accidents. A lot of things will happen. It's your duty to put this data together and to analyze it, this data to know where you need to improve on to prevent accidents or injuries from happening to anybody. Because that's the basic reason why we are safety professionals. Like I told you, safety is very wide. When we go into the topic, you understand better what I mean is very wide. Now, conduct regular services and audits. Those are part of the inspection we are talking about. It's a wide, wider range of inspection. Auditing the system to check for non-conformances. Then we, we call something safe operating procedures. All these things are the reasons, are the duties of a safety professional. You develop safe operating procedure. Someone wants to work at tight. How will you work at tight? Okay, he, will, he, will, he wants to work on a ladder. Okay, the ladder must be inspected. The ladder must be good. The ladder must not have any fault. Okay, the person will place it on the wall. Someone must hold it. Then the person will, 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 will take a step at a time. Some people will, will climb the ladder. They will be taking like four steps at a time, five steps at a time. Some people will climb their, their staircase. And it's like these guys that are always rushing. I know ladies are very gentle, but guys, if you, are, if you are running through the staircase, you will take like four steps at a time. Pa, pa. Even me, I do it sometimes too. So, but in safety, you are meant to take a step at a time. So, those are, these things, those are the procedures that you, follow, you, pro, you develop and make sure that people follow it. And you inspect the site to make sure that they are following it. Conduct trainings and make sure that anything you want to do is being communicated in the meeting. Now, where can a safety professional work? We are talking about safety. safety. Where can they work? Now, number one, construction industry. I've, worked, I've been working in the construction industry. In fact, as I'm speaking to you now, it might, it might be in some background noise. I've been working in the construction industry for, it, for some time. Though I've moved to uh, manufacturing, but now in construction again. In the construction industry, safety is very important. Second, in the oil and gas setup, safety is very, very important. I, 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 I want to work in oil and gas. That is everybody's dream, to go to oil and gas. So safety is very important. In they take safety serious, more serious in any other place. They don't take serious as important as in the oil and gas sector. Because any little thing, you know, they are, they are, they are dealing with gas that can explode. Any little thing can destroy the whole facility. We have a lot of, we have Beirut explosion that happened some years, um, um, there's an explosion that happened so many years ago that the whole oil rig burns from the beginning to the end. I think it has happened somewhere in Nigeria too before. We have mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. They do. They take safety seriously. Exploration and production. Those that do it, that explore crude oil and produce the safety person can also work there. Healthcare industry. Now they are taking safety very seriously now. Healthcare industry takes safety very seriously now. Pharmaceutical industry. A safety person can work there hundred percent. In the manufacturing sector, safety person, safety professional. Health and safety professional, especially if you now add quality to it, it makes you uh, of higher advantage because they deal with quality also. So when you do some quality courses like ISO 9001, which is quality management system, it's as a lead auditor, it gives you the chance in, into going into quality as a safety professional. In the manufacturing industry too, like I said, I worked there for some time. In the mining industry, very hazardous area where they do blasting. In the power industry, in the power sector, all these are, we, we used to call them NEPA, PSCN. We can, all this IDN, DC, all this uh, co DC that distribute our, our power supply, we can work there. In the ministries, Ministry of uh, Environment, Ministry of Health, you can work there. In the waste industry, you can also work there. I didn't have it there. In the water industry, too, you can also work there. You can work as an auditor. There's, there's what, what is called auditing, it's a different discussion on its own. You can work as an auditor for ISO 9001. ISO 9001 deals with quality management system. ISO 14001 deals with environmental management system. Why ISO, ISO, the last one deals with occupational health and safety management. So you can work as an auditor to audit a system to make sure that they are... Auditing means that this is what they say they want to follow. 
this is the actual thing that they documented that they are following. Is it the same thing? Is what they are following the same thing as what they said they will follow? That's what auditing means. So you can work as an auditor, as a state professional. You can work as a trainer in training firms. You can work as a consultant, like consulting for construction companies to help them to take their safety into place. You can work as you can work in the marine industry. You can work in the aviation in, in, in the aviation industry. There's a session for safety. You can work in the transportation industry, like TSL, all those transport companies. You can work with them. You can work with all these good, good models, all these models, the standard ones. You can work as, as their safety officer or their safety supervisor to help them to develop safe system of what of work so as to prevent accident. Remember, the aim is to what prevent accident, prevent injuries and make the workflow. You can also work in the banking industry. I was surprised. Last month, I saw an advert. Application, please, we are looking for a safety officer. In Zenith Bank, Zenith Bank was, was searching for a safety officer. I think it's Zenith Bank. To tell you how, how safety is now going deep into every sector of the economy. So, safety is very wide. In the insurance firms, you know, all these insurance companies, when they want to do insurance, sometimes they consult safety persons to know what to do at a particular point in time. You can work in the telecommunication industry. You can work in the petroleum industry too, just similar to oil and gas industry. You can work with, in FMCG, like fast moving consumer goods like Pepsi, Coca Cola, all these people that make Pepsi, that make Biggie, that make fast con fast moving consumer goods. You can work with them. And you can work in risk management firms too. So safety is very wide and applicable in so many regions that I, that I can't even mention here. Now the question is, this is beautiful. I can't. I'm not limited. To, I'm not limited to one discipline. I'm not limited to a side. I can work virtually in everywhere. Okay, what do I need to become a safety person? Who can become a safety person? Who can be, become a HSC person or QHSC? Or QHSC, no matter what, it, no matter the case may be. Anyone with basic background, the first thing is to have a background knowledge of not of safety, like academic background, like a national diploma holder can become a safety person. You can develop yourself from national diploma. You can do some professional courses, add it to your national diploma, and you are and you are set and you are good to go. Then start gaining experience as you move on. Someone with higher national diploma or BSc holder, I have HND, I'm, a, I'm an HND graduate, chemical engineering, Lagos State Polytechnic. So, and I'm a, I'm a safety professional now, and I'm proudly HND. When I say proudly HND, like proudly HND holder. So it means that someone with BSc or HND can become a safety professional no matter what course you study. An MSc holder, a MSc holder too, and a PSG holder, anyone can become a safety person. With a basic academic background, you can pursue HSC professional courses. So these are pericusides. Now we have academic course, we have professional course. Academic course are those that I've mentioned: MD, HND, BSc, PhD. Even someone that went to study uh, all these um, education, uh, I forgot the name they call them. They can also become a professional. But what you need to now do is to add professional courses to it. That is where the professional qualifications are now coming. You know, we have academic qualifications, which I've stated. Now, we now have professional qualifications that will keep you moving and become more qualified in the what? In the safety profession. So, what are they? What is required? What makes you qualified? Like I said, health and safety is very wide. And so many areas, and have so many areas of expertise. I'll still, I'll still address that one too. It has so a so lot of areas of expertise that you can concentrate on as a person, as a graduate, as someone who wants to go into health and safety. For example, in the engineering, engineering social science, management science. If, if, now, talking about management science now, I was, I've, I've, I've mentioned the issue of ISO lead auditing, ISO management systems. That is safe, safety management systems. As, as a student of management, you can do that. Science, science generally, LCLT, you can go into health and safety. Education, environmental science, very welcome. Not, even in the nursing industry, nurses too, you can, you, are, you can have your own space in health and safety. Engineer can have his own space in health and safety. A risk manager will have his own space in health and safety. 
a social science student, we have his own space. Even a security personnel, we have his own space in health and safety. It's always easy to become a safety professional by choosing an area of expertise that is closer to your study. For example, what I'm saying here is that anybody, like I said, anybody can become a safety professional. But if you have a course that is closer to a part of safety that you can hold, it's always very good, but not necessary. For example, someone who studies civil engineering, a civil engineering graduate, can, can decide to go into construction safety. Because you no know, construction is actually civil works. So as as a, a as, as a civil engineering graduate, you can decide to go into construction safety. Someone who studies chemical engineering or mechanical engineering can decide to go into process safety. That's another part of safety. I'll still mention all those ones to us. Process safety. That this is process that is in the oil and gas. That is they look at the process. You no know, process can actually lead to serious accidents. It, it can lead to explosion. Anything can happen in the process. There can be high temperature, low temperature, there can be any parameter that can deviate and lead to exposure. So, someone who is a chemical engineering graduate that understands chemistry, that understands reaction, chemical reaction, can become, a, a, can become, can go into process safety. Now, a nursing graduate can become a, an health, occupational health and safety nurse. Occupational health and safety. So, in safety, we have what we will call occupational nurse. You can Google about them. So, it means that there is room for everyone. It goes on and on and on like that. However, it is not a rigid process. With various trainings, certifications, experience, with time, you can become an expert in this beauty profession. All you need is to start with the basic. And now, what are the basic? I mentioned some basic here. I will, see, I will send a slide to you, Mr. Tariq. Like ISPON, Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria. That is the basic. GSE level 1, level 2, level 3. You can get certification in advanced health and safety certifications. Loss prevention certification is an example. We have NEBOSH. People used to talk about NEBOSH, 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 NEBOSH. There are a lot of certifications in NEBOSH. We have NEBOSH process safety management. I, I have this one already. So I said I, 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 I won't be talking about myself in the beginning. So I'll be addressing it while I go. I have this one already. Then I have NEBOSH process safety management. That is similar to loss prevention. That is for process safety because I study chemical engineering, so I want to go into process safety. Then Nebosch IGC2. I have Nebosch IGC2. Then other Nebosch uh, Nebosch National Certificate. Nebosch is actually owned by the UK. This is one is owned by Nigeria. Nebosch, there is they have construction certificate too. They have oil and gas. They have Nebosch diploma. They what we call IOS too. No, we have ISO certifications that I mentioned. I have the three ISO that I mentioned here. ISO 9001. 5001 and 9001. You can also do them. This 9001 will qualify you more as a student of SLT. ISO 9001. It will make it more robust when you add it to your health and safety profession. Then you can also become a trainer by going for IELTS training trainer course. I also have IELTS training trainer. Then you can now you can also choose to go into food process. Yes, there's what you call HACCP. Hazard analysis and critical control points. That is for full process. There is full safety too. In safety, we have full safety. I'll still go into that. We have fire safety. We have first aid. A lot of them like that. From there, what skill do you require to be able to go into this profession? Functional skills, like ability to identify hazard. Technical skills to investigate. Human relationship, human relationship skills to be able to relate to people. In safety, something is called Behavioral based safety is very, very important. Communication skills, too, very, very important. And auditing skills. Now, what are the best opportunities? Like I was saying that time, you can become a safety officer, QHSV officer, a supervisor for safety, you can become a coordinator, safety coordinator, you can become a safety manager, you can become a safety specialist, you can become an auditor in safety, you can become a process safety engineer. You can, sorry, you can become a loss prevention engineer. That's what is called loss prevention engineer. You can become that too. You can become a safety engineer, fire safety specialist. You can become a food specialist, food safety specialist. You can go into procurement of PPE. Okay, what, what I want to do? I'm, I'm a business guy. Let me start procuring PPE for companies. They need add that. They need hand gloves. They need nose mask. Let me let me go into that. 
they can decide to go into equipment inspection. Okay, what I want to do is that I want to be inspecting equipment for them because there are a lot of equipment that they use too. You can go into that. You can become a trainer. You can become a first aider. You can become a scaffold safety inspector. That's what it's called scaffold in construction. You can become a chemical safety specialist. A lot of things that you can become. And at the end of the day, you can become a safety consultant. You can go into issue of, you can go into quality, a quality manager to focus on quality of whatever is being done in the workplace. Like I said, it can be quality, health, and safety, environment, and security. So it's very wild, and there are a lot of applications and a lot of things that you can actually drive into when it comes to health and safety. I would have decided to take more time, but the time I was given is very minimal, and I know we have a lot of questions to ask. So I have to rush through so that we can all have time to ask questions. So thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the discussion.